bring in uh, retired or bring in former IDF spokesperson and retired IDF Lieutenant Colonel Jonathan Conricus. Um, thank you, Colonel, for being here. Uh, six more hostages have been killed. Uh, U.S. position right now is to remain firm on this ceasefire. Uh, but does this give any confirmation that Hamas really had no intention of negotiating good faith with the U.S. and Israeli negotiators? Yes, uh, <clears throat> good morning to you and thank you for having me. It's a very sad day for millions of Israelis to uh, start with the horrible news of uh, the fact that six Israeli civilians who were abducted by Hamas brutally from the music festival on October the 7th endured 330 days in Hamas captivity only to be murdered uh, a day before Israeli troops got close enough in order to try to get them out. And um, so it's, you know, it's a mix of uh, so many reasons to be sad and the fact that we came so close yet we're not able to bring Israeli civilians home, I think is the most punishing for the families. Now, uh, you said, you know, two words that don't really mix, good faith and Hamas, th th that, that's something that you just can't say in the same sentence. Hamas mm -hmm. is uh, extremely evil, I would even say diabolical. Uh, they abducted women, children, civilians, elderly babies, and have been holding on to them now for 332 days. Uh, sorry, 331. And, uh, you know, if you look at their actions, uh, you, I think you can make the assumption that uh, they're not really uh, going to negotiate and that they're not really interested in uh, returning hostages. Um, contrary to what uh, your reporter said before, uh, actually at this time, uh, the working assumption in the IDF that I'm aware of is that hostages are in the hands of Hamas and that they're held underground. Mm. That is the main reason why it's so difficult to get to them and save them and extract them alive because of the nature of getting close enough to hostages when they are underground. And as you'll remember, eight Israelis have been rescued by Israeli forces. Mm -hmm. Seven of them were held above ground and were, uh, and thus security forces were able to get them out. Uh, what does this say, what message does this send to other families that still have uh, loved ones in Hamas captivity? Uh, does it give some hope that, they, that they're still alive given that uh, two days ago, the, these six were still alive. Uh, but what message does it send? Does it give them hope that, you know, the IDF is doing the right thing and going after Hamas to try to retrieve these people back? Um, maybe just comment on that and, and just what message this sends to other people that have loved ones in Hamas yeah. activity. You know, um, I, I, I can't imagine what the families of hostages, hostages are going through, 331 days of hell. Uh, longing for their loved ones, worrying, etc. I'm sure that the few of them will see this the positive way and say that if the six uh, that we just uh, got back were alive a day and a half ago, then maybe our loved ones are as well. Uh, just to be clear, there's 101 Israeli hostages uh, in Gaza being held, out of whom 35 are already known by Israeli authorities to be dead either taken as they were uh, already dead as bodies or executed in Hamas captivity and Israeli authorities uh, have confirmed that they are dead and the families know about it. So we're talking about good scenario, maybe a little bit more than 60 Israelis that currently are presumed to be alive. And I hope that is the case and I hope that you know, uh, we could bring about some kind of deal that allows Israeli civilians to be returned to their loved ones after so many uh, days of uh, so many months. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, however, you know, the situation is one where Hamas doesn't seem incentivized enough in order to give up the hostages. There doesn't seem to be enough pressure yeah. on Hamas. There's a lot of pressure on Israel, but not enough pressure on Hamas to give up the hostages. Colonel, how do you see this playing out now with these six dead hostages and especially and, and um, having one Hirsch that was very uh, re highly recognized. His face was on a lot of these posters. This one right here, uh, this young man, uh, he being one of the six that were found. Do you see this, the conflict changing now? We were working towards a negotiation of a ceasefire. Is that off the table now, given that we're finding more of them dead? 
No, I don't think so. And I think that just as you reported at the top of the hour, there's going to be big demonstrations today in Israel. Uh, it's anticipated, and tomorrow there's going to be a general strike in Israel by uh, authorities and the labor unions in solidarity with the families and in order to uh, express lots of people's frustration with the fact that the government has yet not facilitated the return of the hostages. So I don't think that uh, this barbaric execution of six Israeli hostages uh, uh, makes it unlikely that there will be a deal. Maybe there will be more pressure now on the Israeli government to do more and concede more to Hamas. I only regret, I regret many things, but I regret the fact that both Egypt and Qatar, uh, countries that the, the U.S. has uh, good uh, strategic ties with, are not forced to apply pressure on Hamas. I see a mm -hmm. lot of pressure on Israel, but I don't see really any of the different, um, let's say, allies or friends of Hamas, right. Egypt and Qatar, paying a price for the fact that Hamas are playing hardball for 11 months and are not uh, letting the hostages go, including uh, four Americans that are still in Hamas captivity. That is the big question. Why Hamas is not getting more pressure from other allies as well? Thank you so much, Colonel. I uh, appreciate you coming on. Jonathan Conriquez, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Stay with us. We have more Sunday Report coming up after the break.